This is Twit. This occurs early in the story when uh, the character, the physicist John Grady, learns uh, of the existence of the BTC from Graham Hedrick, the director of the BTC. And uh, he has been uh, brought to speed on, on the current technological development of humanity in reality. And so uh, there's another character named Alexa the, who is trying to convince We should say the BTC is the government organization. Yes, the Federal Bureau of Technology Control, which uh, yeah. was founded in the, in the Cold War to try to uh, prevent society from being disrupted by rapid technological innovations at the time. They were going through all the moon landings. Scary, yeah. And they, uh, they got a little carried away and they started harvesting all of this technology and then used it to accomplish their mission. So they are living basically 50 to 70 years more advanced than we are. Right. So John Grady, Love the this. physicist, has learned this and they are trying to convince him to join their organization. And they have just presented to him a scenario, uh, a computer model, of what would happen if his invention were unleashed on the world and it it resulted in very dire consequences within a century uh, for all of humanity so i believe that's where we started yeah right? he's, he's he's just seen the the model and uh and we'll take Jeff it from Kirk, there like. okay i get it but i think you're painting a worst case scenario he sighed wearily and looked to hedrick i guess i hadn't thought through the consequences of my work but i still say you're being pessimistic Alexa folded her arms. These models have successfully predicted much more than this. Grady considered this. All right, okay. Hedrick smiled warmly. Then you'll join us. Grady pondered it and finally nodded again. Yes, I guess I am interested to see what other advances might speed my research along. Mr. Grady is lying. The voice came from the ceiling somewhere. It was the same disembodied voice that Alexa had spoken to. Hedrick looked disappointed. Thank you, Varuna. Alexa looked unsurprised. Hedrick focused a less friendly gaze on Grady. John, did you really think you could deceive us? There is no lying to the BTC. Grady looked at the walls and ceiling. Is that really an AI talking? It's our bureau interface, and never mind what it is. I'm concerned that Varuna says you're being untruthful. Grady spoke to the ceiling and Hedrick both. I'm not lying. Look, I want to have a chance to continue my work. He gestured to the projection of the Earth. It's obvious that I haven't the analytical power to assess the effects of gravity modification on society. Mr. Grady, you are dissembling. Near-infrared readings of the activity in your occipital and frontal lobes demonstrate deceit-related latency. Alexa, Hedrick, and Morrison stared at him. He shook his head. This Varuna thing is wrong! Alexa scowled. Bigotry isn't appreciated here, Mr. Grady. In plain language, Mr. Grady, it takes humans longer to deceive than to tell the truth. When responding to external stimuli, humans require an average of 800 milliseconds to reach what's termed readiness potential, meaning a decision. Approximately 0.05 seconds later, a second surge of electrical activity implements that decision. Throughout your visit today, your brain required an average of 606 milliseconds to reach readiness potential. Your recent statements required almost twice that interval. Hedrick pointed to the ceiling. We are primitive things, John. Our biological systems are well understood. Finally, Grady took a deep breath. All right. Okay, you win. He looked to Alexa. Spare me the sermon about how I'm egotistical. The BTC controls advanced technology. You're putting yourselves in a position to technologically dominate humanity. That's what this is about, and I don't want any part of it. I'd rather burn my research than work for you. Alexa turned to Hedrick and Morrison. Hedrick nodded to her. Thank you, Alexa. I appreciate you trying. She gave Grady one last look. I consider it a personal failing that I was unable to convince you, because unlike you, I wasn't lying. Those simulations have accurately predicted the spread of the Internet, free markets, drug-resistant bacteria, and much more you don't know about. Alexa started to walk away. Sooner or later, you're going to realize we're right, Mr. Grady. For everyone's sake, I hope it's sooner. In a moment, 
She slipped out through a side door, leaving Grady alone with Morrison and Hedrick. The men regarded one another. Hedrick shook his head sadly. We have indeed seen your type before, John. The idealist. You call us megalomaniacal, and yet you're the one not cooperating with others. As for burning your work, we already have it. All of it. And I think you'll find that the BTC has many smart people who can start where you left off. It'll just take us a little longer without your particular mode of thought. What you're doing is criminal. I know you believe that. You feel violated. But ask yourself whether it's not your wounded pride that's made you dislike us. With time, perhaps you'll come to realize that the BTC is humanity's greatest hope for an enduring future, and that we as individuals have no right to alter society to suit our personal visions. You're the one with a personal vision of society, not me. It's not personal at all. We've been given a legal mandate to protect society. National Security Council memorandums of 1948 and number 68 of 1950 empower us to deceive the public for the greater good, what's known as the necessary lie. Hedrick pressed his thumbprint to a digital document that had materialized on the tabletop in front of him. And it's for the greater good that I'm remanding you to our Hibernity facility. Hibernity? What, what is that? A safe place for brilliant people who nonetheless failed to see reason. You mean a prison? Hedrick pursed his lips. I suppose it is a prison, a humane prison designed to protect the public from dangerous ideas. Morrison let a crooked smile spread across his face. I'll take it from here, Mr. Hedrick. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Doors behind and to either side opened, and Grady turned to see a dozen swarthy, young, perfectly fit men enter in gray uniforms with inscrutable insignia at their shoulders. The men were identical in every way, with blonde crew cuts, square jaws, thick necks and broad shoulders, though not particularly handsome. They looked, in fact, exactly like a younger version of Mr. Morrison. The realization dawned on Grady as the men approached calmly. Oh, my God. Morrison chuckled. You'll be seeing a lot more of me in the future, Mr. Grady. But then, so will everyone. Yeah, Jeff Turner. <laughs> that is something to watch. That is great.